Hello everyone, here we are back uh, playing deck two. We are, where are we? Sometime in February. February the 15th and it's the Allies turn, the uh, Axis have moved, the Italians have done their thing, they've uh, shipped some of Rommel's forces into Benghazi and the Arita division is uh, progressing pretty nicely. They have uh, moved quite a few of their troops up to here. So we're kind of cranking along there from the Italian side and got a nice uh, nice line uh, built up here with the reserves in the back and it all looks rather sexy. And as I had uh, uh, written a little while back about uh, on a new blog that uh, Jonathan Holland had started, that um, that's not really the whole story, right? It's it's not just about going head to head in OCS as I have relearned here. So we've taken quite a few losses, as I mentioned, for both sides. But uh, in particular, the the British have lost a substantial amount of uh, forces in the Australians and Indians. So this turn is really going to be all about getting back to some of the, the core principles of what I think OCS is about, and we're going to look for ways to get around this and isolate as much of this as possible so that they have to pull, the Italians have to pull support from a supply from these two ports. And they won't, and I want to stop them from pulling it from Benghazi, uh, from uh, Tobruk. If I'm able to do that, that's going to mess up their ability to bring reinforcements in, their ability to ship SPs, and generally cause the access a lot of problems. So how am I going to do that? Here's my plan. We've pulled all the forces back out of basically out of artillery range of the Italians because every turn the Italians would fire off uh, the Arti and DG one or more stacks which would uh, limit the effectiveness of the forces. So what we're going to do uh, is this big stack here there's several SP at the bottom and we've got uh, mostly battalions here but I'm going to run a couple of uh, stacks forward, and the first thing I'm going to try and do is overrun this unit here. And then once we do that, we're then going to push other guys through, and we're actually going to try and get uh, either back to here or across to there. And that's going to be the beginning of a push to try and block off these one, two, three roads that... Uh, provide supply from Tobruk or give the ability to provide su thrown supply and trace uh, to uh, to these guys here. So that means that then trace would have to go out of these two here, which is fine. I'm not necessarily worried about putting these guys completely out of supply. I just want to block their ability to hammer my forces and use SP. And I think uh, what that's also going to do is derive the Axis forces to uh, potentially either give this spot up and address a threat to, uh, to Brook, or uh, reinforce this here and overcommit, in which case uh, we'll, see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I really don't know, but we'll see what happens. So uh, I'm going to uh, go run a couple of attacks, and we'll see what happens and see how far I get and come back. So we just did the first attack and this ended up with a, an 11% chance of a loss for the Allies and an 83% chance of a loss for the uh, Axis. And so we have to take step loss and unfortunately <laughs> i got to lose this guy, uh, which is a real pisser. So that's eight movement points to there. And then we were going to go uh, uh, eight would be one more there because we spent a third there, so that uh, would round it off to make it nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So get to here. <coughs> now, the other thing that I could do, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, you can go to here, 13. some payments uh, for uh, uh, the combat. We'll take care of that in a second. 
Now, uh, what we can do with some of these other guys is put them in reserve so that at the, after the combat phase I can move down here and try and get into this hex here or maybe this hex here, we'll see and I try and cause some problems so let's continue so real quickly we've now moved and paid for movement for these guys we moved them from here and they uh, they went this way they just came down this road here here and then here and we're going to hold there so that they can uh, you know kind of block any defensive maneuvers there and then we're going to keep going from there and as we continue to move we have taken uh, Campbell and some of the Indian, 4th Indian, can spread them along here to slow any reinforcement this way, if it indeed happens. And we've taken this uh, road junction, which I think I just mentioned, and I brought up uh, another unit here uh, to prepare, be prepared for the next kind of step forward. Now, right now, we've got 9 SP uh, that we would need to provide trace for, which is pretty substantial, but here, I actually have uh, four there already, and I've got a couple of trucks full of uh, stuff as well, so we're real close. But I haven't, I've got HQ over here that I haven't moved yet, which I think I can get uh, close enough to be in within range, and it's probably something I should have checked first, but uh, hey, let's fly with the city of my pants and have some fun. All right, excuse me, we'll uh, keep going. All right, as we wrap up the uh, movement phase, We've moved our HQ, who was uh, in City Barani, and and you know what? I'm actually going to move. I'm going to take a chance and just move this uh, unit, uh, pay a T from City Barani, and catch him up to this guy. He can travel with him. It's just a little uh, light tank vehicle, but that'll give that HQ a little defense, just in case. Now, this HQ has a throw range of eight, and he. Uh, can, he needs to reach back to a primary road. <coughs> uh, is that right? I think it's primary road. To be able to uh, do trace supply. Primary roads and roads can be used. So this is a normal road. And a moment of panic there where I thought it was going to be uh, the white roads. The highways, I guess I would call them. Anyway, uh, so we're reaching back to here, and that's five hexes from there. Well, five truck movement points, right? One, two, three, four. Ooh, oh man, I can go a little bit further. Anyway, near enough. And then eight, so we've got a little bit of buffer there, but uh, then eight hexes throwing out truck movement, one to there. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then plus one. So, uh, so that guy's within throw. Uh, this guy, one, two, three, four. These guys are all in throw four, five, six, seven, eight. And actually, I can get even closer uh, there. So those guys are definitely all good. So everyone's in trace. That means the supply that I, this stockpile I had prepared to pay for trace if I needed to, I won't need it, which is good because I can use that uh, in in uh, combat and other things. And we're going to move to the combat phase. I'm going to do this attack here. This is going to be a pretty brutal attack. Uh, it's, it's a one, uh, one uh, defense factor unit. And we'll just use uh, the tank unit because that'll be doubled. So that's four. Excuse me, and this guy, no, that's Artie. And so three and four is seven. You probably won't even bother using supply for defense for this chappy. So that would make that uh, a half. So it'll be 14 to 1, uh, and there's a plus 2 uh, delta on the action rating. So he actually died. It was an exploit 2, lose 2. And with the exploit, we're just going to step up one hex into town. And uh, in fact, with the exploit move, we may, we may take advantage of that and move to here. Um, I'm not sure if artillery can exploit move. I think they can. We'll stitch that guy over there. And... We'll do the exploit move later, but 
just to uh, keep it all legit. I'll just put an exploit marker here, even though it says a four. And that's basically the British turn. We lost one battalion. And now if we step back and have a look at the situation, we've got a few little things to, I've got to shuffle a couple of bits around, but a uh, very different situation that we were looking at previously. Uh, thinned this out here fairly significantly, but still managed to keep uh, a brigade and a battalion and some artillery here and, uh, and a battalion of tanks. I've got a strong brigade here with O'Connor uh, and an artillery piece, and these guys are holding the halfway house location there. Uh, that's probably the weakest location at the moment. I'll try to get my hand out of the way there. And then we, we, you know, we've pushed in. Now, what, who knows what the Italians are going to do in response, but it's pretty interesting to see how rather than just banging our heads directly into this and spending a whole bunch of supply for a grand total of 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Mm, I moved a few other pieces. Let's call it uh, 5 SP for 5 SP. We've made an uh, end around flanking maneuver, uh, begun cutting off forces, and I've only had to do two attacks. And this one I could have elected not to do. Uh, I just did it just to clear up the clear up the area. So one attack, major, not a major breakthrough, but a, a, major, a major maneuver in any case that has really kind of caught uh, the Italians by surprise. Um, and it's really a move that the British are going to had to make now uh, before Rommel hits the floor. Anyway, that's a kind of a, a that's a long video, but I hope you uh, liked the a little bit more detail there on on my thinking process and hopefully I didn't make uh, too many mistakes. Now I have moved these guys their their uh, third or whatever it is uh, quarter movement uh, in reserve, and they're going to continue their movement uh, when we do the exploit phase. And I'll uh, I'll pop them up uh, up here somewhere as well. So that's going to be you know a pretty significant stack of guys there. They've got uh, 16 movement points, 14 movement points. So they're going to crank up to here and uh, be ready to uh, project force uh, next turn, perhaps or uh, you know hold here. Who knows what they'll do? Okay, there you go.